This video is the first in a series of videos covering Arduino basics. They are meant for people starting their adventure with Arduino. This one is a part one of the tutorial on working with Arduino and LEDs. We'll show three easy projects, including wiring and coding. Part two of this tutorial with another three LED projects would be posted shortly. We would need following components. The aim of the first project is to control the LED with a push button. We want to have LED lit while the push button is pressed. Here are instructions on how to connect all the components. Let's put all the components on the breadboard. Now we can have a look at the code. We define two variables that correspond to digital pins to which push button and LED are connected. In our case it's pin 13 and pin 2. We declare push button's pin as input and LED 1 as output. Low signal is sent to pin 2 to switch LED off at the start of code execution. In loop function we read the state of the push button from pin 13. If the high value is red, this means the push button is pressed and we send high to pin 2 to lit the LED. When the low value is red, we switch LED off by sending low to pin 2. Let's compile the code and send it to Arduino board and see if the prototype we built or it would work as expected. It does. You see the LED light up only when uh, the push button is pressed. And when it is released, LED is off. The second project would be very similar. We also want to control LED with the push button, but this time we want the push button to work as a turn on, turn off switch. When we press the button, the LED turns on, and when we press it again, it should turn off. We use the same setup as in previous project. Let's look at the code. We define the same variables for push button and LED pins. We define two more variables for storing current state of push button and LED. High value indicates that the push button or LED is on and low value indicates that the push button or LED is off. 
we have one more variable for reading the state of the push button. This one is going to help us detect the change of the state. As previously, push button pin is declared as input and LED pin is declared as output. In setup, we read the current state of the push button to the push button state variable. At the start of the loop function, we read the state of the push button to push button new state variable and compare it with the state recorded in the previous loop run. If the new state is greater than the old one, it means that the value has changed from low to high, meaning the button was pressed. If the button was pressed, we check the current state of LED. If it was off, we write high to pin 2 to lit it and we change LED state variable to high to reflect current LED state. If the LED was on, we write low to pin 2 and change LED state variable to low. At the end of the loop function we save push button new state variable under push button state variable, getting ready for another loop run. Again we compile to send the sketch to the Arduino board and observe the results. And again it works as designed. We program push button to be an on off switch. In the third project, we want to control five LEDs. We want to lit them one by one in a sequence controlled by potentiometer. I chose to use LilyPad LEDs here. They are nice little small PCBs with LED and resistor on board, so it is saving us a lot of work when wiring the project. I soldered two male gold pins to those LEDs so they can be used on the breadboard. Here is how all the components fit together. Let's put all the components on the breadboard. Let's analyze the sketch. We connect potentiometer to analog pin 6. We have 5 LEDs connected to pins 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Variable LED to lit is storing the pin number that needs to be lit according to the potentiometer position. Pin 6 is set as an input and all LED pins are set as an output. In loop function we read the state of the potentiometer. The values range from 0 representing 0 volts to 1023 representing 5 volts. Map function is used to map the value read from pin 6 
which varies from 0 to 1023 to values uh, from 2 to 6 corresponding with digital pin numbers. Map function is not great when mapping to small ranges like in our case. So in, in this case it was returning values from 2 to 5 and the pin 6 was never chosen and the LED linked to that pin was never lit. When I changed the mapping range from 2 to 7, then it finally worked. Now that we have identified the pin that should be set to high, we run the for loop going through all values from 2 to 6 and setting high to the LED corresponding to the potentiometer position and low to all the others. Let's see if we connected everything in the correct way and there are no mistakes in the code. Perfect. We light up all five LEDs one by one, back and forth, just as expected. This is all for this video. As I mentioned, part 2 of this tutorial is coming soon. Did you like this video? If you did, this is the perfect time to find this subscribe button below and be notified about other similar videos. Hope to see you soon.